Hello, everybody, and welcome back to When Reality Hits with Brittany. I'm doing it solo, but I have a very special guest coming on, and I'm so excited to clear some things up and let you guys hear a different side of the story for a change, and I'm very excited about that. You know, me too. I never get nervous for podcasts. <laughs> Brit, Brit, you got to put sunglasses right on to make you invincible. <laughs> I should probably do that. What if I put sunglasses on too? Sure. Okay. So, Watch this. I was going to have a surprise guest, Tom Schwartz, on to recap a lot of the drama going on on the Vanderpump Rules reunion, but things have been spiraling out of control online with Joe. And I feel like Schwartz needs to address some things that are going on because, you know, you're a good guy. And I feel like that this it's not really fair that it's so one-sided. Last time Schwartz was on here, the podcast, he didn't want to mention her name at all because out of respect for her, he just wasn't trying to go there. And I appreciate that. And I think that's great. But now the lies are getting a little crazy. So, everyone, say hello to Mr. Tom Schwartz. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Hi, Brett. Hi. How are you? How are you feeling? Well, I, was, I know we're supposed to do like a fun reunion recap. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, I I just like, I, listen, I, I, I've i tried not to touch this. I've, I've taken the high road. I am Mr. Rise Above. You know, I don't go looking for negative stuff online, but people inevitably like send you stuff. And like, I'm seeing Joe talking shit about me, like random clips, you know, um, and I've tried not to respond, like just ignore it, you know, like saying I'm her soulmate uh, reading my text, you know, on a live stream. And it, it like, I, I just feel like I have to address this. Yeah, you, you have know what to. I mean, it's like, cause I'm starting to get really negative comments on my social media. You have to. It's start, it's like it's not getting to me, but it's like I just want to address it, okay? And you said nothing but nice things about her. Let me make that clear. Schwartz only says nice things about her. He does not like put her down, talk crap about her at all. Thank you. But now things are kind of like spiraling out and lies are being spread. And that's why I really think that Schwartz needed to like address this. Thank you, Brent. And okay, for, at the top though, let's just let's acknowledge like clearly she's acting out, you know? She yeah. her feelings are hurt. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to invalidate her feelings, but also I have feelings and they're valid too. Okay. I got feelings. Yeah. Right. For sure. Okay. I just want to like give, I want to, I want to shine a light on my point of view and why I pulled away from her. Okay. Because I feel like she's kind of using social media to create like this sort of, I don't know, poor me. I got played breadcrumbing narrative, you know, but she's building like, <clears throat> she's building a following at my expense mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm getting tired of it. You know what I mean? I mean, the videos have been a lot that's what i mean like the live streams like i it's like i just want to clear some things up she's blocked on my social media like she's deleted from my contacts you know but people send me this shit like unsolicited and this will probably be like the last time i talk about it hopefully um but it's just really it's frustrating to see her uh playing the role of like a victim okay it's like sometimes you really dig somebody and then you find some things out about them that causes you to look at them in a completely different way you know mm -hmm. what i mean or yeah. sometimes, sometimes you just really dig somebody and then the feelings go away. Yeah. You're, you were just having fun kind of, I feel no, like no, you, it, you know, went through a lot with your relationship and you were going through a divorce yeah. and everything else. So yeah, no, of course. And like, okay, I, I will acknowledge like just for the record, I think people know this, but like we hung out so much, we had such a good time together. Mm -hmm. Like we had some sort of whatever you want to call it, but you know, we spent a lot of time together and it was so fun, but we were never in any sort of conventional exclusive relationship. Um, and we were coasting in like a pretty nice direction, I think until like, maybe like I, the beginning of filming. Um, and that's where, I don't know, maybe, maybe I started to know like some erratic behavior, maybe some red flags. Like yeah. I was going to ask you because so many people were wondering, she did that like one live where her friend was in the background and she kept, people kept asking her, what was the one big thing that made you and Schwartz or that made Schwartz like stop talking to you or like, you know, back up from the relationship. And she was like, I don't know. We don't know what that one thing was. Yeah. I mean, I, okay. I didn't see that, but like, the, I, listen, I, I don't want Was wanna, it one thing or no, was it a lot of things? It was things? a lot of things. Yeah. It was a lot of things. And I'm not going to divulge most of those things. But yeah. Like, you don't have to. Like the, but one of the biggest things is I found out that she makes up, she makes, I'm not going to, in my experience, she's a compulsive liar. Yeah. Okay. And, and like, I know the, the, this firsthand, I will say this, whenever, I'm just going to say this story because I feel like people do need to realize this, because whenever Kristen's um, dog Bowie passed away, 
she was telling people that Jax and I called her and told her that Kristen's dog passed away. We don't even, I don't even have her phone number. I haven't talked to her in years and years and years. So for me, that was just like, why, what, like, what's the point of saying that? Yeah. Like that, that was just such a lie. That's the thing. Like some of her lies are just like benign. For no reason. They're, they're just benign, yeah. nonsensical kind of outlandish lies. But some of them, like, I'll talk about this. I'll touch on it. I'm not going to go into detail. Yeah. Because I just, like, I'm, I don't want to grudge or anything like that. But, like, some of them were malicious or manipulative. And low-key, I feel like kind of what she's doing with these live streams, like, building a following at my expense. And, like, I feel like she's, bored, like, it's slightly manipulating the audience, too. But, like, you know, again, clearly. Well, she keeps saying so, that you're her soulmate. I, yeah, let's, let's, like, let's get into that. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Please. So it's like, just so, like, just, yeah. So I'm like, like, what's happening? So, like. All right, just so they have an idea, like, the, the first one, the, the first time I was like, oh, my God, like, holy shit, that caught me really off guard. It's kind of a doozy. I was going to say, did she say that to you? Like, did, did, like, was she open, like, you're my soulmate to you? No, she was not like that to yeah. me. Yeah. Like, we had a great connection, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, that's established. Yeah. We were hanging out a lot. And yeah. By the way, she never lived with me. Just to the record, Joe has her own place. She has, like, a rental property. She has an apartment. We never lived together. But without a doubt, like, we had a great connection. And like around the time we started filming is where I started slowly pulling away. And like one of the main reasons was like the first lie that I substantiated and I found out. It's like just like casually one day she mentioned that she used to babysit for one of our executive producers oh kids. Yeah. And she told me that. And I was like, I was, I was telling she her. She told you that to, her, to your yeah, face. Just so nonchalantly. And she was like, cause I was telling her about the pitfalls of doing reality mm -hmm. television and how somehow it's like, you know, things can get taken out of context. It can distort your image. And she's like, no, no, no. It's like, I'm not worried about that. Cause like I used, I babysit your executive producer's kids. Oh my god! And it's like, and I never, I have no like, reason, what is the I point? have no reason to question that. But I asked him like weeks later and he's like, no, I had never met her before the show started. That was the first seed of doubt. Yeah. And You're like, like, whoa, that, like what's the and, point and, of that and lie? And we, and we you know, were, we were never in any sort of conventional relationship. So I didn't, I didn't confront her. I was just like, okay. And I started slowly pulling away at that point. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then as time went on, you know, we filmed, we had a good time. I thought we could just stay friends. Like, you know, we, they, like, and I just, I, I, like, people started coming out of the woodwork and telling me things about her. And I would, like, shut them down. Sometimes even go to bat for her and defend her. It's like the thing that really. Was it ever a red flag for you that she just kind of, like, stopped talking to Kristen? I mean, I never, at the time, no. I got to be honest, though. I was down. I was, like, fucked up. I was in my own yeah. world. Yeah. I was vulnerable. I was not thinking right. Right. But like there was this, as time went on, like some other things happened. Um, in particular, I'm not going to go into this, but there's some like like I said, some we of, need to hear some things because know, you know, need to say like your the, side first of a little all, bit. After yeah. what I just told you, yeah. After like I shouldn't even have to say anything else, but like some of the things that happened were kind of manipulative and malicious. Joe is not a bad person. She's not malicious, but some of the things I found out that she told my family behind my back really. Your family, yes. too. Yeah. Like my mom told me. My sister told me. My brother told me. And it's just, it, honestly. Was, do you think that was the biggest thing of why yes, you started pulling away? Because sure. your family got involved? For sure. Yeah. Because my family got involved. And, like, it's like they were. Like, and your family's super close. You're they were like, so close yeah, to them. Really fucking, like, dangerous accusations. And, like, I just, I don't even know if she remembers this, Joe, if you're listening. I don't even know if she remembers this shit. Like, really? I just, like, just based on, like, the, I don't know if I want to recount it. You should. I don't want to recount it, but she's like, she just, she went behind my back and, and called my family and said some fucked up things. And like, and like her and my sister were as like, they, they were like two peas in a pod. They, I swear to God, my sister was her biggest fan in the world. Yeah. You even told me that your sister she, really she liked her. She spent two nights with Joe and she said it was one of the worst experiences of her entire life. Just think of go like think about this. It's yeah. kind of a profound statement. She spent two nights with her. She had to block her afterwards, and she's like, "I'm traumatized." She apologized to me profusely for weeks for trying to push her on me, and I was like, "Cause I was like, I was trying to explain to her like Joe's a great person, like she's cool, but I just know like there's no longevity here." Yeah, and like, yeah. I just don't think like I'm just I have I have um, some reservations about it, but anyways. Not going to go into detail. I mean, that I'm, that kind of says a lot anyway. That, just that. like that stuff, it just really rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm just, I don't know. I just want to say in my experience, like I just, there was too many, there's too many lies.
When Reality Hits is sponsored by NurX. NurX is a digital healthcare platform that makes it easy to get the expert healthcare you deserve. They offer birth control, anti-aging, prescription skin care, and treatment for common mental health concerns. It's great to have a place to go, especially as a woman, and I think this could benefit so many people who are looking for stuff that they need and can't find the resources. NurX is a great place to go for women, especially for things like this. They have 24-7 care and support, so you can ask questions when you need it most. Today, Nurex has delivered birth control to over 1 million patients in the U.S., and they offer more than 50 birth control formulas, including options for the pill, patch, or ring. Complete a medical consultation anytime, day or night, and Nurex provider, licensed in your state, will review your health history, if appropriate, prescribe treatment for you. They accept many major insurances to pay for your birth control prescription. Get your birth control delivered straight to your door in discreet packaging. You know, some people I know have this stigma about going to the doctor and getting things checked on, whether it's for mental health or for birth control, different things like that, that you like really need and doing things online or over the phone with people who actually know what they're talking about can be a great resource for you because there's no reason for there to be a stigma about it. Thanks to Nurex for sponsoring this podcast. Taking control of your reproductive health starts here. Go to Nurex.com slash reality to get started. That's N-U-R-X.com slash R-E-A-L-I-T-Y. Results may vary, not offered in every state, medications prescribed only if clinically appropriate, consultation required. Do you know how many diets the average person will try in a lifetime? About 162. That's as many games as in a baseball season. The weight loss industry runs on desperation. Crazy diets and weight loss products are temporary and most people gain it all back. Not when you visit Sonobello. Visit Sonobello.com slash reality hits. That's Sonobello.com slash reality hits. Sonobello is the only way to permanently lose unwanted fat and inches. Sonobello doctors are masters in micro laser fat removal. Wherever you have stubborn fat, tummy, sides, thighs, arms, it's all going away permanently in one visit. Ask about their modern techniques to eliminate sagging loose skin. Sonobello gives you your curves back permanently. No more feeling embarrassed and shy and uncomfortable about your body. No more hiding in baggy clothes. Give yourself the gift of a full body reset. You deserve to be happy. Schedule your free consultation. Learn about micro laser fat removal. Sonobello is running a great special right now. Visit sonobello.com slash reality hits. That's sonobello.com slash reality hits. How do you feel about her like outing your text messages? Like was she she was like reading them on yeah. lives, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, clearly like Joe's hurt. Yeah. And I don't think she may I don't know if she has a great support system. She's like looking for validation on social media. And, you know, I, I just it, it it felt like kind of a violation. You know what I mean? Like if if if, if like if Joe hears this, wait, I'm gonna do a call to action. <laughs> Joe, if you hear this, Haley. Like the person that I used to know, what like go and show them, you know, go show them your hobbies, like the shit you do, your hair business, surfing, uh, go be zany and wild. Just don't can try to build a following at my expense. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like just like this, it's I don't know. She's she's looking for like short term clout and imaginary online sympathy, and then I feel like she's sacrificing any sort of chance she has for like legitimacy or you know, just yeah. a credibility. It's just, I don't know. I get it. Like, I think she's hurt, but like, I, I pulled away from her because there's just too many lies. Too many and lies. I'm, I'm yeah. not like, trust me, I have a list of like minimum of 20. Yeah. 20 like substantiated, confirmed lies. I mean, didn't she kind of say that after you guys did the reunion together that you were hanging out with her or no, texting no, her? No, like, one of the ones that really rubbed me the wrong way. I don't, I don't know what, I, like, I don't know the timelines on this stuff. Someone yeah. sent me one like a week ago. And she was doing a live stream and she's like, he texts me nonstop, but I don't feel comfortable because I know he's seeing someone. And I'm just like, what the f is she talking about? Yeah. Cause this you're like a week ago. Yeah. Cause you're not doing that. Obviously. Not at all. Yeah. It's like, it, I just, anyways, like, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to hold a grudge. I just, I don't have a grudge. Like I have no hard feelings. It's just like, I pulled like people need to respect the reasons why I pulled away from her. They're very fucking valid. Yeah. I'm sorry. They're very valid. And anybody in my situation would have done the same thing. For sure. She, I, like, I'm sorry. I mean, lies from the get go, like big lies just, just, about big people in our lives. Just That's like, weird. Again, some benign, but some like the stuff with my family, I can never look at her the same way. Yeah. And she's cut from, you know, she's cut from my life forever. Yeah. 
I mean, how are you feeling right now? I mean, I know it's all a lot. And like the fact that she was on the reunion, I thought was kind of crazy because I don't even remember. Was I on my first year reunion? I don't know. Yeah. But like that had to be a lot for you to like have to deal with that as well. Because like I know that it's just like taken off and just went viral. I just it's like it did. It did. It's like I, I'm getting so many comments like you breadcrumbed her. You let her on. And I'm just like, you guys, sometimes do you feel you like really... you did it all like no. Do you want to explain that no, part no, no. as Just, well? Yes. Yeah. Like I said in the beginning, like we had so much fucking fun. Yeah. We had a con- an undeniable connection. It was fucking fun, man. Yeah. It's like in the beginning, I think I liked Joe because she was just so like the polar Chill. opposite human of Katie. And I don't mean that in a spiteful way. Yeah. But just like coming out of a 13 year relationship and like w- without a doubt. So I don't want to confuse people. Like, yeah. Given quote unquote mixed signals. But like sometimes you guys... You come into something and there's like a, you know, there's a haze of like some sort of infatuation. You dig each other. It's so fun. But then sure when you say, find something it. out about someone, it changes the way you look at them forever. And it's like when you find out someone's making up like random lies, mm-hmm. I don't know. It makes you question all the, all the outlandish stories she ever told me and the things she said. It makes me question her motive for coming into my life. Do you know what I mean? I, I 100% know what sloping, you mean. But it, it makes me like, I'm, I'm, I'm not just like, there's a lot of them. Yeah, and people like p- patrons in my bar would tell me stuff. My family would tell me stuff. Like I, after we stopped seeing each other, literally all my friends that I'm close with came to me and mentioned things. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And also, like a lot of people watching a, a reality TV show don't realize how long ago these things were filmed. And like you went through these things. So like how long has it been since you and Joe like haven't even been talking to each other? Like maybe we should clarify that so that people. I, I mean, yeah, we, I've, I've barely talked to her in the past five months. OK, yeah. You know? And I think it's that's like, very important to address because yeah. people think that they're watching a live show sometimes. And it's like, no, yeah. this was filmed months ago. Yeah, it's like it's just I don't know. Ever since like sometime like late summer, early fall, there was like some incidents with my family. Just like it just caused me to pull away. Yeah. And I tried. You know me. I, so, I, I don't want any. Bad I know blood. there wasn't one big thing, but definitely addressing your family and, and doing things with your family was just like, like that was like, OK, I can't. I think, I think in the moment she thought she she was. <sighs> doing something for me i i mean i don't i don't, I don't want to get into that you don't have just, to it's like it's it's but i think people listening would understand like when your family's involved that's like a whole different it, level it, it you gets, know yeah that yeah. was that that last text i sent her which she read like only a portion of on the live stream that's i i the reason because i had pretty much cut off contact but like i got infuriated so i kind of rage texted a little bit it was actually a very constructive semi-uplifting text towards the end but like i started enumerating some of the reasons why i left her and why when you find out a few lies some again some 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 innocent and some not so innocent it makes you just question everything mm-hmm. and it anyways just hey go live your life yeah <laughs> go build a following do your live streams do a surfing live stream just don't try to do it at my expense she, and, not, and she's I not love, a victim yeah she's not a fucking victim okay i love that you said poor joe narrative it's like i love that you said like show like things that you're good at like show your surfing show this yeah. show that like that's like that's very nice of you to say especially after your name is being dragged around like that exactly by that person and, and, and like on some level i get that this is like her brush with fame here it's new. It's exciting. Yeah. Before I, we even like talk today, Schwartz was like, it's so hard whenever you're a first time on reality TV, to, like, gr- like there's a lot that comes with it. A lot of pressure, a lot of comments, a lot of everything. So like even like Schwartz was being like, I get that part of it. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. Part, you're, I, I understand. She's probably, she's experiencing like her, her brain's probably lit up like the 4th of July. Yeah. Because it's like, she's in a, she's in a negative and positive feedback loop on social media. Yeah. And I'm not saying like we're jaded, but I've been there, done that. And it still gets to me sometimes after yeah, 11 years. It's hard. But like, dude, like the fact that she's doing it at my expense, it needs to be addressed. And I'm shutting it down. Yeah. I pulled away for very valid fucking reasons. Get over it. Move on. Close that chapter of your life. Start a new shiny, bright one. Go blossom. Go be great. Give them yeah. Joe. Just, just give them my, Joe. Keep my, <laughs> keep my name out of your mouth and move on with your life. I, I love it. So, yeah. see, like, we still want the best for you, Joe. If you're listening or whoever, like, it's always uplifting, and that's one thing I love about Schwartz. Like, he's not trying to like bring somebody down or anything, you know. So, yeah. I just, yeah, and then, like, I, I wanted it on a positive note, but it's like, yeah, she also like. She used to preach about how much she hates social media, how she would never do reality oh, TV. Oh, that's the worst. Her gospel. Not just like once or twice. It was her gospel. That's the worst. And now I see how she's acting. And and, and by the way, good good for her. I, I, when you exp- As life goes on, you change your outlook, your perspective on life. 
with new information. You know, made, I like that she's embracing it, but she's doing it at my expense, and it just seems like I don't know. Clown- yeah, it seems clownish. Well, I'm glad you addressed it. I think that that was important. Yeah. When Reality Hits is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening to us talk, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy and you could save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $750 dollars on average and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy being a homeowner and more so just like your favorite podcast progressive will be with you 24 7 365 days a year so you're protected no matter what multitask right now quote your car insurance at progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust progressive progressive casualty insurance company and and affiliates. National average 12 month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Imagine an app designed to make you use it less. Seems counterproductive, no? Well, Apartments.com's Instant Alert feature works exactly that way. Instead of scanning rental listings a million times a day, simply set and forget your search to whatever you're looking for in a place and let Apartments.com do the rest. From pet-friendly apartments to balconies to in-unit ACs, Apartments.com's powerful search tools let you know when the perfect combination of features you're seeking is listed. So you don't have to power through rental descriptions one by one. With more more rental listings than anywhere else. Apartments.com's instant alerts mean you can spend less time online looking for the perfect place and more time doing you. Apartments.com, the place to find a place. Anyways, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, we're not filming right now. VPR is on hiatus. I'm like, I'm de- I'm taking a little detox from yeah. social media. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to go on some side quests and, um, what side quests, you know, just like maybe reinvent myself, maybe learn a new language, travel, <laughs> learning pretty- a new language at this age is so hard. It's so hard. Like it's insane. I'm, I got babble. <laughs> I did it too. I, I was trying to babble. learn Spanish like 1000%. Like I got this. Yeah. And I, all I remembered is like the things from high school. I was like, cerveza means beer. <laughs> My uh, Spanish teacher in high school, I think was an alcoholic. So that was like her favorite word. Okay. That's the- <laughs> We're in high school and she's like, cerveza, cerveza. I remember the first <laughs> song I ever learned in Spanish. You want to hear it? Yeah. And it's like stuck with me. Yo soy un cerdo, yo soy un cerdo. No me gusta trabajar. <laughs> If you speak Spanish, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much for singing that for me. <laughs> um, the translation is hilarious. What is it? Tell me. I am a pig. I am a pig. <laughs> I do not like to work. <laughs> Which is low key true. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That is hilarious. Um, okay, so let's do a little. What's going on in the Valley Land? Oh, Everything. yeah. The Valley, you know, this last episode was super tough for me and Jax. I was like getting car sick. He was trying to blame it on me drinking. I hadn't drank that day. I think I had like one shot with the crew earlier. 
get car sick and then he's like hounding me all night about it it was not a good look it was not good so how did, did you see the episode i saw clips online but yeah. i know they get chopped up and sort of um processed for for maximum clickbait so i i, I know better than to you know react from just what i see online yeah right? but yeah from what i've heard from what i'm hearing it's not good it was not good it's and not i know good. you're good friends with jacks you're good friends with me but how yeah. do you feel about Jack's doing that to me. I'm gonna put you on the spot right now. Oh my God, <laughs> wait! I didn't see the episode. Can I plead the fifth? Because I don't know. I don't have context. I just saw clips where it's like you were in the room. He's like, stop. So he's try, like, stop so, so my room that I chose was like right beside the kitchen. So they're all like talking in the kitchen, and I could hear everything they're saying. I didn't even have a mic on or anything because I was like sick and. You know me, I want to be a part of the party. Like, I, if I wasn't feeling good, I wouldn't be, you know, not a part of all my friends and everybody out there. We were supposed to cook a dinner, and I'm, like, one of the best cooks. So I was, like, had all this stuff planned <laughs> to cook. And, of course, then, like, Jana had to do most of it. And, you know, it became, like, this whole thing. And I felt so guilty about that part. But Jax was just, like, going in, being like, I bet she's drinking. I bet she's drinking. And I wasn't. And all my friends were like, no, she's not. And he was kind of like putting me down in front of all of my friends. Yeah. He's like, that's one thing that you've probably seen in our relationship is like, Jax doesn't care to fight with me in front of people. And that's, and, and by the way, that's one of the great things I've learned from my past relationship and from Ken. Shout out to Ken. It's like uh, support in public, uh, talk about it in private. Exactly. And that's yeah. something that me and Jax have never done. And like, that's something that like, always really embarrassed me but i just came busting out of that room they had a boom on me in two oh. seconds and i was like I, and i just like spewed out my heart because that just it was so hard for me to hear that whenever you're sick and your own husband is kind of like talking about you and putting you down you already don't feel good you know yeah. so it was just like a whole like thing and i know schwartz is so uncomfortable right now because he doesn't know what to say i am speechless about I, no i can no First of all, no, he handled that very poorly. Yeah. Jax would admit that. If he was here, I'd say the same thing. Yeah. He, but I think uh, the reason he said it, because he, he thought you, you, know, you were like over-consuming because you have a stomach issue, don't you? Yeah, I do, and yeah. He thought, so you were kind of doing like this masochistic thing and not learning your lesson. Yeah. So I, thought, I think he thought that he was giving you a lesson, but I mean, it was like- No, and it, that, didn't, it didn't hit either because I hadn't drank. No. Like he thought, he was like, you guys drank on the boat. We didn't have one sip on the boat. The guys had the alcohol. Yeah. So they're all wasted. And all day, Jax is like, I'm wasted. I'm wasted. All the guys are hammered. All the girls are completely sober. And then it becomes like he flips on me and says that I was the drunk one whenever really he was the drunk one, which has happened to me numerous times, numerous times. So, you know, this is an ongoing thing that he's done to me over our nine-year relationship. Oh, now I'm squirming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I got to go. <laughs> I got to see the episode, but also I know your guys' relationship. You're both very candid with me. Yeah. Um, how are you guys doing right now? Um, not great. Right now, I'm kind of like, can't even be in the same room with him very long. We're, well, and was, last time you were here, I was like, fine. You, thought, you were like, I forget you guys are even separated. So it's very up and down like that. It. Yeah, you guys seem like, oh, dare I say cute? Because I don't want to disrespect you because you guys you have both set boundaries. But like, yeah, seemed kind of like the old Jackson Brittany. When he tried to kiss me on the cheek or try to give me a pet kiss and I gave him my cheek. That was so awkward. I know. It was cute though. But also I understand like, no, you guys have made your decision and yeah, you guys, I think you guys do a good job of respecting each other's boundaries, right? Mm. No? He hasn't no. done a good job respecting mine. That's oh, for sure. Shit. Oh shit. But we got to remember I'm the one that's living elsewhere and I'm the one that's like, I feel like I'm the one that's taking all of the hard hits, even though I was the one that had to leave. Shorts is gonna die. He's like, don't talk to me about this, please. I, I am do, I'm using transcendental meditation right now. I've gone to another place. I'm back in Florida. I'm on the beach. I got a really cold Corona light in my hand, a shot of Patron, and I'm happy. Yeah. But I, I'm a, you know, physically, I'm here. <laughs> is uh, there anything from the reunion? Obviously, going through a weird time in my relationship right now, but, or what would I call it? Are we in a, me? Are me and Jackson a situation ship now? Like, what the heck do we call it? I don't even know. Think, Very weird. You're separated, and you're and you're co-parenting. Yeah, co-parenting. May I say, uh, doing a, a a stand up job of co-parenting. Thank you. Uh, that part is the most this, important. Yeah, I said this last time, and I feel like when when it comes to cruisy, you guys are like very uh, practical. Yeah, reasonable. I don't see any. I've never seen a, I've never seen an ounce of toxicity around cruise oh, gosh, which i no. admire because it's like 
because the rest is can be hard, you know. And, the, and, and there's a lot of love there. Like I feel like, it's, <laughs> it's, like I don't. This is not a health. I don't know. Yeah. Like as far as Cruz is concerned. Oh gosh. Know. I don't know. I don't want to open up this um. Yeah, no. Here. It's true. It's true. Like we both are very respectful of that. And even on days where I'm like, don't talk to me. Yeah. If it's about Cruz, we're gonna respond and talk to each other. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like that is always number one and most important. Was there anything from your reunion that you wanted to talk about? I would prefer not to. <laughs> Just call me Bartleby the fucking Scrivener. I would prefer not to. <laughs> you are so funny. Okay, we don't have to at all. Um, Schwartz, this is your first time at my Airbnb. What do you think? It, she's literally living in my dream pack. <laughs> I guess it's mid-century modern-esque, but with a slight tinge of like modernism and it's like beautiful the landscape is insane there's plants everywhere you guys know how much i like plants plants there's a ping everywhere pong table. yeah there's a ping pong table um, i think the outside looks like palm springs totally. and then it looks like miami in the, in the inside yeah maybe you know what i mean maybe some art deco undertones but the landscaping <laughs> is insane and i'm i i like listen i saw the comments about people uh speculating about whether or not i'm gonna move in with tom they're not good <laughs> Uh, so I was thinking, yeah, you know, I, uh, how about I move in here? Hey, <laughs> give me, give me some money monthly and we're good to go. 5K, 5K a month. Uh, I want two rooms. I want the ping pong table. <laughs> ping pong table is in the shared space, but you definitely get the biggest room. Okay. Aside from mine, I don't of want, course. I don't need the biggest room. They're both big. You'd be good. There's no pool though. I think it would make more sense than, um, Sandoval. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh Hilarious. Jax would have a panic attack. Oh my God. Jackson, we're kidding. <laughs> Schwartz, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. And telling your side of the story. Listen, you know, I appreciate you. You know, it's not about who's right, who's wrong. It's like the intricacies of life. Um, oh my God, I'm trying to be poetic or philosophical. <laughs> I should just shut up. <laughs> you always say the biggest words. I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I do the only time I use big words is that I, is when I'm overcompensating for my uh, stupidity. <laughs> no, you were great. Thank you so much for coming on. And I hope people can see a little bit more into your side of this whole situation because that's 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 crazy. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. And, uh, well, hopefully you have one more episode left of Vanderpump right now, right? Yeah. I feel like towards the end of the reunion, there was... Um, it's, was it worse at the end? No, I felt like... I don't know. Maybe I'm delusional, but I felt like some sort of sense of oneness. I don't know. I felt like a not a one love. Obviously, that's never going to happen again with certain cast members. Yeah, I won't yeah. Mention, but it, I don't know. I think it just kind of. I felt a moment where <sighs> we were reflecting on how long we've all been friends and been together, the yeah. highs, the lows, everything in between. I don't know. I, I it felt sentimental. Yeah, it didn't feel like an end to me, but uh, people, it didn't or did not. It didn't. Okay, you know. did it. Okay. Um. Anyways. Well, yeah. good. I hope everybody tunes in next Tuesday to Vanderpump Rules, the last of their reunion finale. And then, obviously, the Valley next the Valley. Tuesday. Valley's on fire. By the way, it's like I, I, we talked about this last time before we go. It's like I've, I, I've never watched the majority of Vanderpump Rules episodes, especially the vintage ones. Yeah. So I thought it'd be fun to do like a little retrospective at Schwartz and Sandy's. And have some special guests. Hopefully, we can get Brittany in there. Yeah, I'll Dodie's come in. Down, yeah, and maybe Jacks once in a while. The OGs. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. But we're gonna just have us there on separate nights, and we're good to go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start with episode one. We're not gonna watch it sequentially, but uh, we're gonna start with. Ep I've never seen episode one. I yeah. couldn't tell you what happens. There are so many episodes I've never seen exactly. at all. At so all. we're gonna do that every Tuesday. We're leaning into the VPR thing, and Love we're gonna brace that on Tuesdays. And then we got all kinds of cool shit coming in: new music, new food, new drinks. Anyways, sometimes I just like Britt, I'm sure you can relate with this. Sometimes it's hard to not get hurt but by, by the things that are being said about you online, you know? It's almost impossible not to take it personally because it's your life, but it's also snippets of your life. And like watching this season back, like I totally understand where the audience is coming from, you know? I don't fault them for judging me, especially like watching the reunion. They have limited information. They have to just react based on what they're watching. And, you know, that being said, like the producers, the editors, they do a fucking hell of a job for creating a you know a great show with the information they have. But it's like rarely we do we have time to get into all the nuances and everything. You know, the gray Are you area. Trying? I like the gray area. Not that I, wait, this is not good for me because <laughs> people tell me I need to stop straddling the fence. Anyway, I do it too. I do it too. I, I, I like I like audience members. I still love you. And like I feel like I've fostered such a great community in the bars. Every single night, there's so much love. 
A lot of hate online, but I don't take it personally. I still love you guys. Anyways. Love it. I got to get the out of here. <laughs> Come hang out with me. Yes. Come well, take a half shot with tell me. Tell everybody where to find you. Talk about all your plugs yeah, right now. Yep, yep. You can find <laughs> me on uh, Instagram, TW Schwa. You can find me at Schwartz and Sandy's Tom Tom. Doing bar crawl coming up. Uh, check out Tom's Good Love and Whiskey. Um, lots of good stuff coming up, man. By the way, shout out. I, I, I'm a proud investor of Passion Tree Seltzer. Can I give a shout out to them? Yeah, for sure. Wanna... Shout out whatever you want. I love it. <laughs> give all your stuff. Can right I shout now. out my mom? Yeah. Mom, I love you Aww. so much. I can't wait to get you out here again. Love her spoil too. you rotten. When's she coming back? Uh, I'm trying to get out here in late June. She's so sweet. Yeah, she is. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. I can't wait to She's see an her angel again. if there ever was one. Oh, well, thanks, Schwartz. Right, we love you. Thanks for coming on When Reality Hits with Brittany. <laughs> She talks about etiquette. Get your fingers out of your mouth. She talks about where to find a deal. You know, if you sell me something on Instagram, I buy it. Whoever markets to me does a fabulous job. She talks about the economy. We used to joke that'll be the thing to send them to therapy. Okay, we're creating jobs. Can we look at it that way? She talks about parenting. These kids want to come home. They don't want to leave. They don't want to drive. They want to stay in the womb. Let's talk with Heather Dubrow every Thursday on Podcast One or wherever you get your podcasts.